Going into some movie news now. So SAG after members have officially voted to ratify their new contract. 78% in favor of the deal with 38% of the SAG members submitting a ballot. Um, when I first heard this, you know, 38% of members submitted a ballot. I was like, oh, that seems really low. But when I looked into it a little more, that's actually like the biggest turnout they've had in a long time for a vote. I think there's something with like, in order to vote, you have to have paid your most recent dues. So that makes it so a lot of people aren't able to like vote or something like that. I don't know, but um, definitely uh, heavily in favor with 78% in favor of the deal. So we talked about it, you know, probably a month ago, that the deal was, you know, official, but now it's actually, you know, inks dried, eyes dotted, T's crossed, it's signed. So for the next three years, should be good on this contract until uh, it expires because it's a three-year deal. Um, Warner Brothers and A24 have signed a deal to bring all past and future A24 films to max exclusively after their theatrical debuts. I think it's a huge, uh, huge deal for A24 to get some more widespread recognition for their movies. Uh, right now they have a deal with Showtime, which has a deal with Paramount Plus. So like not not nearly. I don't know the streaming numbers, but I'd imagine way more people have max than Paramount Plus. So be good to get more eyes eyeballs on it. Cause I know we're all kind of disappointed with a 24, how they have such limited releases and hopefully this can bring some more revenue to them and get more hype built around them as a studio and make it so that maybe they can have more widespread theatrical releases. So who knows, but big deal overall. I know max has been shitty lately, but uh, to like their projects and stuff, but I'm happy to see them get, you know, get more like max's library is already so deep and now adding a 24 whole library to it is going to be awesome. Um, but yeah, uh, Cam, sad news for you. Netflix's average height, average build has been canceled. Uh, that's awful. Adam McKay movie starring Robert Pattinson and uh, who was uh, 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 Robert Pattinson and Robert Downey. Yeah. The, the Roberts. The the, the, the Bobs. Bob's. Bob's movie from uh, Adam McKay canceled. Cam, awful. your thoughts? Just bummer, man. I think Adam McKay is like Adam McKay is like freaking out about climate change, which I get. All, all you know understandable completely that's like what don't look up is about basically and now i guess he's doing another movie about it um which i'm sure will be great maybe he'll cast robert downey and robert uh pattinson in that <clears throat> but just bummer that he's not doing this because it was going to be like a satirical heist movie mm-hmm. i think or a crime movie something like was that. he the one who canceled this or was it netflix or do, you, do we not well, he said i'm stepping away and netflix was oh. like oh we're not going to do it without you um, yeah, so he stepped away to work on a new movie, um, which is revolving around climate change, um, which, I, again, I'm excited for that because I love Adam McKay, but I, I think this would have been awesome, at least for me. So it's unfortunate, but it's all right. Yeah, would have been a would have been excited to see it because Robert Pattinson, I feel like, you know, obviously he's come so far from Twilight and he got deep in his, his thriller bag and then now he's Batman and then now we see him voice acting the boy in the hair and I feel like this would be like a new fun side of Robert Pattinson that we probably haven't really seen before in like a satirical borderline comedy. It'd be just kind of fun to keep seeing like what he does and see him keep pushing himself as an actor to, to different genres. That was Christian Bale. Is Robert Pattinson and the boy in Heron as well? Yeah, he's the Heron. Mm-hmm. Bale, Bale, and Bale was in Howl's Moving Castle. Oh, wow. I also, by was... the way, on that note, apparently, from what I've heard, I've seen someone the other day about it, apparently the voice acting is really not good in the English dub apart from... Robert Pattinson. Well, Pattinson, who's apparently amazing. Apparently, the rest of them aren't just aren't very good, which is surprising. But, you know. Yeah, I think I think so, I even saw someone go as far as to say like they watched the dub version first, and they were like, "I'm not even going to review it until I watch the subtitle." Like, I don't think I can actually give this a score until yeah. I see the subtitled version. I kind of want to watch it for Pattinson, but it's kind of putting me off that. Oh, Christian Bale's in it as well. Record. Okay. Oh yeah, he is in. There's it. just oh, a yeah, billion yeah, people yeah. in the boy in the hair. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I was so confused because I like could have sworn Christian Bale was the Heron, but he's the father. Mm-hmm. Okay, interesting. All right. Good to know. James Wan says his next film will likely be a return to horror. He says he feels like the itch for horror is potentially calling, but we'll see. Uh, when, yeah. unless it's another malignant type film. <laughs> but I mean, James, like, has anyone generated more franchise IP in the horror game than James Wan? Has like no, and his history. films are actually and his films are actually good as well. Well, yeah. like Saw, Insidious, Saw, Conjuring. Conjuring. Does he have any I more mean, that, that became that, franchises? That's than that three of the biggest horror franchises right. ever, right there. Right, and like and like in such close vicinity to each other as well. Like I think Saw was two thousand six, Insidious like two thousand nine or two thousand ten. I want to say, and then I think Conjuring was like two thousand thirteen. So in such close vicinity, he's created two of the biggest selling and biggest appealing horror franchises ever. So you know, fair place for him. Yeah, and of course, like outside of horror, he's done, you know, Fast 7. Was that the one that he was in? Or Fast 5? Did he do Aquaman? He did Aquaman 1 and the one coming out. So even though his movies in the DC universe and the Fast and Furious universe are good, like better of the the universe, 
Um, I can see why he probably has an issue to return to horror because I feel like working in the Fast and Furious universe and the DC Extended universe can kind of be like, man, I need to get back to making real movies because those is he doing both- Aquaman, Aquaman two as well. Yep, or is he not doing yep, that comes out in uh, two weeks now. I think I need but, to watch that. Okay, yeah, I'll I'm excited that. to see it just just because I mean, honestly, the the visuals in the first one were so cool. Um, should be should be good. I, I have high hopes for it, even though I think most people don't. But just gotta trust James Wan. Uh, Ty West Maxine is described as over the top gore and an homage to Dario Argento and Giallo genre. Seth, not a fan of that. No, I just I don't like the idea. It's like a murder mystery slasher as well, and I I, I just I don't know. I, I don't know. I didn't really like Pearl. I did like Pearl. I thought it was okay, but I just I don't know. I don't I don't know if this is a good idea to take it. Like I much preferred the the route we took with X, and I don't know if a Giallo kind of thing is going to appeal to many people. I just don't know if it's a word. I think this for me. I just don't know. I don't really like it. I, to be fair, I haven't seen that much Yellow films. I've only seen like three, four, five. Um, but I don't like the idea of like a murder mystery slasher as well. Just I don't. I don't really love murder mysteries. I've kind of worked this out recently. Like I really don't. There's only like a couple murder mysteries I've seen off the head that I actually like really like. There's really not many at all. Mm-hmm. I think murder mysteries are hard to make good because you have to be really clever in order to make it good. Um, That's why like, Knives Out was so surprising because like most of the modern ones, I just don't care about. But yeah, I really liked like Knives Out. Which that shows how well it did it. Didn't mm-hmm. it. Yeah, and then we get nonsense like Murder on the Orient Express where it's like, who's the killer? And then in the end comes like, we all killed him. And it's like, god damn it. That is so stupid. We still haven't finished the uh, the whatever it's called. And now, we, now, Yeah, now where you don't have a Hulu account. So I don't know if I'll ever finish that thing. That, that's, that's gone. Yeah, I, trash. I, I haven't seen haunting in venice i did just post an ad for them but, haunting venice, seen it yet. <laughs> uh, okay. but I, it wasn't about like liking the movie you're just saying it's available to, to oh, fair. and i have heard, I, uh, to be fair, I've heard I posted, people say that it's the best of the trilogy like people well, like I, posted, I posted an ad and i had to mention that rise of the beast was on it so you know that wasn't great <laughs> rise of the beast is peak great no no great yeah, brilliant brilliant um but yeah so t- ty west i mean it, Kind of cool for him though, like as a horror director to get a trilogy where he's kind of did different genres. I think I can't remember what they classified Pearl as, but they said like X is a Texas slasher character study. Yeah, and then so it's kind of like he's know. doing different flavors. Like that'd be fun as a filmmaker to be able to just have like you yeah know, like franchise because yeah, yeah, yeah. it, it's something that came out of nowhere. Like X was his movie, and then now it's like turned into a trilogy out of nowhere. So it's kind of fun that he gets to experiment with stuff. Um, I didn't, I liked Pearl a little more than X, but I didn't love either of them. I didn't really think they were the greatest thing in the world but i didn't dislike them so i'm excited to see you know maxine of uh, f- intriguing cast so uh and then i think we're going to see it next year we don't have a release date identified yet but so i'll see it like two years from now then oh I'll yeah true it. i forgot how, how long these movies specifically take a lot of movies do but you know these ones specifically uh, Crazy. We, some funny just classic nick cage move news nick cage says he has three or four movies left in him before he leaves for tv and then the next tweet that came from discussing film was is because his son showed him Breaking Bad for the first time and he loved it so much that he wanted to try TV. That's just such a thing I can picture Nick Cage just saying to a camera. Just, I love Nick Cage. He's like, have you ever seen that Breaking Bad show? Like that, that TV, I've been underrating it for decades, man. <laughs> Three or four movies is a lot of movies, but you know he's just gonna. He's not. He's he's been in. He does a lot. He's done so many films. That's the thing, man. Like three or four for a person, like a lot of movies. Maybe like sixties, like early to mid sixties. Okay, fifty nine. Good guess. Good guess. Yeah, like so, imagine if Quentin Tarantino was like, actually, I got like three or four left in me. It's not, it's not, we're no, not but direct is going to be different than fucking just acting, isn't it? Yeah, like, but a lot of people like misinterpreted his tweet when he said, like, he has three or four, he said three or four movies left in him before he tries out TV. So I think he, he's going to have Nick Cage. I'm going to say the over underline is 42 more movies in his career. 42. I love Nick call. Cage, man. He's a funny guy. Me too, like but him. it's just, he's been, he's, it's just so yeah. funny for him to be like, my so son showed me Breaking Bad and it changed my life and I need to try TV. <laughs> Uh, Nick Cage in a TV show. I'd like to see it. That sounds fun. I mean, more yeah, Nick true. Cage, the better. You can flesh out and being able to flesh out a Nick Cage over a whole season. That that would be fun to see. I still haven't Absolutely. seen Dream Scenario yet. I keep putting it off, but that's like the last one I that came out with this year that I haven't yeah. seen. Cause I've seen all those other mo- tiny movies from this year. Um, last bit of movie news before we get into nerd news. Margot Robbie and Ryan Gosling's Ocean, Ocean's Eleven prequel. We already knew about that, but now we kind of got some more details on it. It's set during the 1962 Monaco Grand Prix. Film follows the couple as they teach their children how to steal from the rich. 
sounds fun to me. I'm in the Oceans franchise has had a lot of hits, a lot of misses, but something about being set during the 1962 Monaco Grand Prix just sounds like an awesome setting that I'm going to really love the, the 60s aesthetic. You know, just watch Ferrari. Give me more of that Monaco Grand Prix. And you got two, two of the hottest people in Hollywood just teaching the children how to be thieves. I mean, sounds like there's no way it's going to be a failure. It might not be the greatest thing ever, but I don't think there's going to be a, a loser. Yeah. Ocean's Eleven, I think, is the best heist movie of all time. Yeah, I think so. Um, I, I absolutely love it. Is it Steven Soderbergh coming back for this? I don't know if that's been announced. I think it is. If actually, it is, but... if it is, you know, thumbs up for that. But Margot Robbie and Ryan Gosling, obviously, a connection from Barbie. Um, so I think it'll be really great. Yeah, it's uh, coming out in either 2025 or 2026. So we got a ways to go before we're getting, getting this one. But fun to get some little news.